Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, all protocols observed. <laughs> my, my family, they are, they are very funny. Before I stood up, my sister said to me, see how good the other people have been. Make sure you're also good like that. <laughs> and, and my wife said to me, the protocol is, don't forget anybody. <laughs> um, it's interesting that we stand here today. A year ago, we were very sad. And although death is an inevitable thing, when it catches you, you still think about it. And it's one of the things that makes you take stock. In fact, it lets you question the purpose of life. It lets you question your faith. It, it makes you question the fundamental justice of life itself. And there are a lot of lessons to be learned from death or indeed life. And one of the lessons that has become abundantly clear to those of us in our family who discuss these things and talk about it is that probably the most important thing is what you leave behind when you die. Now, this is what a lot of people call legacy. But some people prefer a legacy of finance or money. Some people prefer a legacy of wealth. Other people prefer a legacy of material goods. But the more we think about it, the most important thing is the legacy we leave behind in the people whom we leave behind. What we like to call the legacy of mind and heart. We feel that that probably is the most important thing. Now, since the death of our father, we, we, we feel that there are many legacies that one can leave behind. It may be a legacy of diligence and hard work. It may be a legacy of principles or a legacy of faith indeed or religion. But whatever legacy is left behind, it is a thing that we carry within us that is admired. And it is that thing that we should all struggle to leave behind. We have wondered what to do to honor a man whom we cherish and who created in us an unsurpassed legacy of mind and heart. In a developing economy such as ourselves in Ghana, there are several challenges that unfortunately reduce the ability of this great country to achieve its full potential. One of the things that Kwesi Bekwe Misatha was passionate about during his lifetime was enabling academics to come up with practical, homegrown solutions to improve this country and the economy. He spent most of his formative years both in academia and technical in this economics department of the University of Ghana. He held a special and deep love for his department. He not only taught economics, he practiced it in government, he practiced it in private practice, and he practiced it at the central bank. Indeed, he practiced it at home as well. On numerous occasions when we were young, he made us aware of things like opportunity costs. If you went to try and discuss why he should buy something for you, he'll tell you that thing you want and your school fees, which do you prefer? <laughs> he made us aware of GDP in that is this thing you are using going to benefit our country? He made us aware of the time value of money. If I leave this money under my pillow, what can I use it for rather than if I invest it? We hope that the panel will continue to break down some of these terms for us so that we understand them better. His heart was imp on improving the economy to advance human well-being and the fair distribution of the benefits of economic growth. He was a people-centered economist who believed truly that a market-based economy must work for all, including ordinary people. Given his passion for these things, we knew that whatever we did would have to first of all incorporate the university through the department, and also it had to have a practical, homegrown, people-centered element about it. It's always easy to identify problems and challenges. There I see everybody knows how to criticize. You only need to listen to any morning show or radio phone-in program 
to realize that human beings love to criticize. The true test, however, lies in identifying appropriate, fit-for-purpose solutions to the numerous problems and challenges we face as a country. These solutions have to be based on data, fact, evidence, and real hard science. One of the things he said once was, we can argue at length about whether this person is beautiful or handsome, but one thing we cannot argue about is whether it's a man or a woman. As of that one, it's clear to all of us. So these solutions have to take the socioeconomic context into consideration. They need to have the appropriate means of monitoring and evaluation. And he was such a hardened believer in this country. And he felt that all these solutions could be found from within our own people. How do we nurture the ability of technical people to solve problems and move to a point where there is local acceptance and application of their ideas and solutions? How do you create more people with solutions than people with criticisms? This forum will be an early proof of concept to ascertain if, indeed, economics can be made simple to all of us. We are unsure as to how we will continue to move this forum forward, but we hope that it is something that we can think about repeating from time to time. With all this in mind, our family has worked hard to design something that would encapsulate the need to find practical homegrown solutions to some of the country's problems and the passions that our father felt. After much thought, discussion, and at times heated debates, we have decided on two things. Firstly, we would like to institute a yearly PhD award at the Economics Department of the University of Ghana. We would like to send this to a deserving high caliber student. This award has already been fully funded by the family in perpetuity. So we've invested a certain amount of money and the proceeds of that money would go to fund the award every year with a proceed matching inflation so that till perpetuity that award will be existing. I am also pleased to announce that the family is at an advanced stage of exploration with the Department of Economics for the po potential to also perpetually endow a chair of economics at the University of Ghana. This idea has received incredible support and we are pleased to say that we have received very positive pledges towards our target of $1 million. The intention of the family is that this chair will go towards solving some of these problems and dealing with some of the things our father was passionate about. This is all pending the necessary University of Ghana regulatory procedures. Funding a chair in perpetuity means that the Department of Economics will be able to attract and retain top talent of professorial rank to give the occupants of that chair the ability to work towards finding practical and applicable solutions, such as telling people where the balloon is rather than the fact that they are in a balloon. <laughs> Our father's belief and faith in the powers of the technical intelligentsia is one of the reasons we feel that this is a worthwhile endeavor he would have supported. It is a fervent wish that the legacy of mind and heart he left in those of us who he raised and touched can be nurtured in those who will win the PhD award and in those who occupy this chair. Thank you all very much.